thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go into his courts with praise. 
Give thanks to him and call upon his name. The Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Today's epistle is from Romans chapter 5. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us, and that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Without a shepherd. 
Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus. <coughs> Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver, or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics, or sandals, or a staff, for laborers deserve it. <clears throat> Whatever town or village you enter, find out who is in it worthy, and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. If it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your word, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it would be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. The one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly, I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
have a, a news fast. Yes. <laughs> just, uh, just let it go, you know. I'm sure the world will not stop turning, uh, even though I'm not uh, reading the paper or looking on the cell phone, <laughs> all of those different parts of information. Because it's not, you know, it's just bad, so much bad news. You can't, you can't just go straight to the living and art section, can you? Yeah. Or better yet, so the comics. <laughs> <laughs> sports. I don't know, sports has been depressing too. <laughs>
that strikes me about this passage, I made a little note in the, in the, in the bulletin about this, is that Jesus can pick up the paper and he's not discouraged. In fact, it just encourages him. Here is the problem. That he has come down to be and dwell among us to address. And to have those who follow him address. In a way, the sin of the world is an opportunity for the holiness of God to penetrate us. It's all about looking at the world a little differently. Not discouraged, not despairing, not depressed. Oh, this is what we need to do. This is what we need to do because this is one of those pieces where someone is in pain or an alienation or an isolation. <coughs> this is what we need to address. VBS was a great example of someone around you here. It was a great week. Uh, 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 Katie will talk more about it um, uh, at the announcement time. But um, why do we do? Uh, we, 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 our, why do we do VBS? I mean, some, considering that we, we have fewer kids now than we, than we have had certainly the time that I've been here. It reminds me of. Uh, uh, an issue I had in a previous church that I served, um, and I, it, we had this great discussion about getting a playground. We just had the, our own playground equipment and things. Why are we getting a playground? We don't have any kids. You don't have any kids because you don't have a playground. <laughs> you see? That's an opportunity. That is an opportunity. And VBS was one of those opportunities. Yeah, we had a dozen kids, and most of them were from outside of this church. I don't know if they're going to come and join the church or not. They may or may not. But is that why we're doing it? No. We're seeing an opportunity. And we're filling it. We're keeping our hands in the mix so that we're supple. We're supple in being able to turn on a dime, which is the great gift of this church, the ability to be flexible, to be able to adapt to situations. That's what a small church, that's one of the gifts of a small church. But the, the in the other piece is, you know, I guess more than half of those kids were Hispanic. Hispanic. Hmm. You, you hear any? You hear the same thing I'm hearing? And there's a um, uh, and there's a Hispanic conference coming up in, in Atlanta, put on by the National Church. It's going to be for five days in August, and I'm going to go. Anybody who wants to come, is he looking for opportunities? And one of the things that, that the first thing that Jesus tells you, tells his disciples, is that in doing this stuff, you need to travel light. Now, that's not only a practical expedient, because you could make more headway if you're carrying a bunch of luggage, but it's about relationship. That's why he's saying travel light. Don't carry all this stuff around with you, because you're going to be staying with the people that you're talking to. You're going to have a relationship with the people that you are uh, revealing that the kingdom of heaven has come here. You're going to have a relationship. That's what we say, used to say in Curcio. Anybody ever been to Curcio? Okay, there's one. <laughs> yeah, there's ten. Yeah, yeah. Uh, make a friend, be a friend, bring a friend to Jesus. What comes first? Relationship before information. Because if you aren't loving somebody, then you don't have the information. That's the issue here. And there's also another level to this idea of traveling life. Um, and um, I, it was, when, uh, year, many years ago, uh, we moved abroad, my family had an opportunity to live abroad. And uh, we put all of our belongings into six bags, four of which were dedicated to the kid. Okay? So, 
And we lived for that time as if we only had six bags in the world. I mean, we kind of do this on vacation sometimes, you know, when we go off and we just got that suitcase, you know. What does that make you feel like? Whew. Free. New possibilities. I, I've literally put down the dump your luggage in my life. But what does that also do? It opens you up to relationships. It opens you up because, because you're beginning to, 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 to pare down the one thing that keeps us from, from being, having a full and open relationship with other people, and that is us. Our egos, our pride, our self-obsession. We begin to pare ourselves down to the very core of who we were created to be. This is all imaginable. And that takes work. That's another piece of it. It's paring down this stuff. That's what the Christian life, so much, my Christian life has been. Uh, the most valuable pieces of it have not been my accumulation of theological knowledge or, or the tones of various sizes that I've managed to, to consume. My Christian life, the most powerful parts of it, have been getting rid of stuff in my life that's keeping me from having a full relationship with God or having a full relationship with him. That's it. That's what I call traveling life. And that process is also evangelism. Because who's getting evangelized now? You are. You're believing. You're putting your, your, your eggs in the basket of Jesus Christ. You're beginning to trust in that power. You're beginning to trust in that principle. We can just look at it from a philosophical standpoint. The principle of love. That that is the principle upon which I will stake my life and guide all of my decisions. The principle of God's unconditional love. To be able to incorporate that day after day in your prayers, worship, works in VBS other ministries that do in the church, anything that gets you out of yourself, anything that challenges, defies our self-obsession. And as you go through this process, which is lifelong, you are building up the very engine of evangelism itself. Because you're living it. And you're unashamed of it. And it's darn interesting. Let me tell you what's been going on. Out of your own experience, out of your own belief, you're making a friend. Genuinely, authentically. Because you know you're a sinner. You know, you, you, you know all the bad news about yourself. But the funny thing is, Jesus looks at us and just sees another person that needs to be loved. And that, my friends, is the core and the edge of what it means to say to someone, the kingdom of heaven is near. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with Father, through him all things were made. 
death was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now pray for the Church.
Kevin, and Nathan. Lord, in your mercy, for peace and healing in all the world, in the Ukraine, in the Middle East, and Africa, and in our streets, cities, and communities. Lord, in your mercy, for those who celebrate birthdays, especially Mary Ross, Lynn Smith, Jeff Pollock, Chastity Evans, Anna Marie Smith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I ask you to pray your own prayers, aloud or silently. Thanks for all fathers for this Father's Day, all who have been fathers to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I invite all those who wish blessings of any kind to come forward to the altar. Probably all 
sleeping. I, there were several that were headed out of town for a, a vacation this week. But um, we are going to be um, putting up our dates soon. So get your pens out, pencils out, and then get ready to volunteer for next summer. And yes. Father Jamie oh. offered a lot to the Oh my goodness. Well, yes, Father right. Jamie <laughs> played the part of Ari, the man in the curve, with the funny horse. Um, <laughs> I come from a long line of hands. <laughs> yes, he was amazing and uh, always was one to be like, hey Jamie, in five minutes, here's your script. And he just jumps right in. So thank you. Yes, first of all, I want to remind you, I announced this last week if you weren't here, so those of you who were here will have to sit through it again. For uh, part of our anniversary celebration, we are trying to get 50 backpacks for uh, 50 years. And I want you to think of those kids whose families are struggling to buy groceries, to pay bills. It's really difficult for everybody. And those families probably have to go to Goodwill or some resale store and get a used sticky book bag. And that's how the kids start school. Wouldn't it be great if this church that gives so much could stand up and we could raise 50 book bags, and that's really a lot for a church this size, but we can do it. So last week, uh, I had uh, the book bags are due by July 9th. Somebody said this morning, oh, I meant to do that, I forgot. Grab a car on your way out and put a magnet on your, put it on your refrigerator. So last week, another miracle occurred. There's so many miracles in this church. So two wonderful people, who I guess want to remain anonymous, they walked up and handed me some money, and she said, I don't really like to shop. I said, I love to shop, just ask my husband. And so I would be happy to buy the book bags. So St. Clements now offers an amazing book bag service buying book bags. So you can give me a check or cash. I went to Under Armour last week. They were having a two for one. And hustler that I am, as I was at the cash register, I said, you know, this is uh, for a church project. Is there anything else you can do for us? And he said, well, if you had chosen some of the books that are already on uh, book bags that are on discount, you'd get them even cheaper. So we went back and got, he helped me. We got two really nice book bags that usually sell for about $50 each. The total bill was $47. And I have change left over. Oh, and I'm going to save this. I'm asking you if you'll save your change if you go to a store to buy one, and then that will end up being enough for probably another book bag. Because I tried to return it to these wonderful people and they wouldn't accept it. They said, no, keep it. So with that same spirit, I ask you to reach in the pocketbook. If you can't afford it, you can get some as cheap as $20 that it would fall. You don't go down below 15 or it'll fall apart. But you can also hand me a check or cash. Uh, I want to thank Margaret for the beautiful, beautiful uh, box she made in the Narthex. Put your book bags in there. So please reach in your heart and help these children so they don't have to start with an ugly, dirty book bag. Thank you. Yeah, I'm continuing to teach over uh, in Davis Hall uh, at the teaching hour. Um, uh, Tokens of Trust wrote William's little book on Jesus, on the faith, Christianity. Um, I sent out a note this morning about Mary Elizabeth. I do not have really any Mike's details off. to share. Turn your mic on. Turn my, turn my mic on? <laughs> you have no mic. It's got a red light. Picture. 
Big picture. <laughs> While you're up here, Doug, now I want to hold this man up. Yeah. Yes. I really do. Um, I was thinking about all the work we did when COVID was in its height and putting together that outdoor altar and trying to figure out the audio visual thing. Which we're doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, thank you, Doug. Roll that over. I'll talk loud. Talk loud. Yeah. Uh, so I don't have any details uh, about it. It was a shock to me. Um, uh, she was a book club on Monday. Uh, and so. Um, so you'll probably hear more about that. Um, Margie, I'm, I'm glad to see you in church. Your daughter there as well. Uh, and, uh, I, uh, I, I'm not going to send this out, um, but uh, it's the 21st, July 21st. Uh, and it will be the service for uh, Gary Jordan. Uh, noon, visitation, reception. Over Davis Hall, one o'clock service here, three o'clock internment at the National Center. Uh, we'll get that out. To, uh, we'll publish that for the rest of the congregation as well. Are, are there anything else? God bless you all. Um, it's been quite a season. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Let us confess our sins against God in that way. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, 
now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all human understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and in the love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always.